Hey friends, um, my professor recently gave us this exercise to do in class and I wanted to turn it into a tutorial. Suppose that a 4M by 32 memory is built using 256K by 8 RAM chips and memory is word addressable. How many RAM chips are necessary? To do this problem, you're going to divide the total size of memory by the size of each chip. The size of the memory and the size of the chip is determined by multiplying the number of memory addresses and the width of that memory or chip. So I'll write out the equation real quick. You have 4m by 32. The size of the chip is 256k by 8. We can rewrite these in bases of 2. It would be much easier to do this because then you can just subtract the exponents and have a base of 2. At that point, you'll be able to multiply the base out to however many powers it is, and you'll have your answer. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. This is the same thing as 2 raised to the second power, which is equal to 4. M is the same thing as K squared, and K is 2 raised to the power of 10. And remember, M is K squared, so 2 raised to the power of 10 again, times 32, which is 2 raised to the power of 5. 256 is 2 raised to the power of 8. K is 2 raised to the power of 10, again, and 8 is 2 raised to the power of 3. I'm going to eliminate a couple of these terms before I simplify. Let's bring this back over. Multiply these across. So base 2 stays the same, but you have to add the exponents. So 2 raised to the power of 17 is in the numerator. The denominator is 2 raised to the power of 11. Now to divide this, you subtract the exponents, which renders you the quotient of 2 raised to the power of 6. And if you were to multiply this out, you know, raise 2 to the power of 6, you will result with the product of 64. 64 is the number of RAM chips. And that is the answer to this particular question. For the same problem, part two wants to know, in order to access one word, how many chips would be involved? Now, in order to find this out, we need to look at the memory, excuse me, the width of the memory, which is here, and the width of the RAM chips constituting that memory. We can see that the width for the memory is 32 and the width for the chips are 8. All you do to find out how many chips are involved is you divide the width of the RAM chips, so this number right here, into the width of the total memory. These are pretty small numbers, so I'm not going to convert to base 2. But you could if the numbers were larger, obviously. 32 divided by 8 off the top of my head is 4. That's your answer. Part 3 of the same exercise asks how many address bits are needed for each RAM chip. The RAM chip is indicated by this number right here. So in order to find this question, the answer to this question, the quantity of address bits is given by the product of all values listed except the width. So we don't care about this 8 here. Let's scroll up and re revisit part 1. If we notice, this is the quantity of addresses, this number for the main memory, and this is the width of the memory. This is the quantity of addresses contained in a chip of RAM. This, the width of that same RAM chip. Part one is asking for 
the size which is indicated by the product of both of those factors. We go down to part two. This question wanted an answer from us that only pertained to the width of these two factors here, the RAM and the memory. I cared about 32 and I care about eight. Part three is breaking down the question, the situation even further, but it doesn't care about the width. It cares only about the number of addresses, but specifically the address bits. So how many address bits are going to be needed per RAM chip? We're going to be looking at this number specifically. So if I rewrite 256K as a base 2, I'm going to break it down first as 2 raised to the power of 8, because that's 256, times K, which is 2 raised to the power of 10. Multiply it across, you add the exponents, you get 2 raised to the power of 18. This is the number of addresses here, but it is not the answer to our question. The question is asking for how many address bits. Remember, an address bit is, let's say you have this number here. This right here, bit. This, a bit. This, a bit. This is a bit. If you have four of these ones and zeros, this whole entire section is going to be called a byte. The number of those ones and zeros that you have total is given by 18 right here. It's given by the exponent when you have your product written in base 2. So this is our answer. 18 address bits. The number of address bits needed per chip of RAM. Of the same exercise, part four is asking for how many banks this memory will have. When it refers to this memory, it's talking about the total memory. So this number right over here. Now, in part three, we found intermediary to finding out how many address bits there were, we found the number of addresses, which is given by this, this product right here. So we're going to need that for part four, and I'm going to write it down up here so that I have it for reference. We're also going to have to find that product for this. This is the product not using the width. So this is the number of addresses not the size and it's not the number of address bits, it's the number of addresses, the whole product. So we're gonna need both of those. I'm going to rewrite this down here. Four is the same as two raised to the power of two. M is the same as two raised to the power of 10 times two raised to the power of 10. And we don't need the width for this one, so I'm gonna forget about that two raised to the power of five. It's just two raised to the power of 2 times 2 raised to the power of 10 times 2 raised to the power of 10. Now, to find out how many banks that I'm going to have, I need to divide the total number of memory addresses by the addresses per RAM chip. So I need a quotient. 2 raised to the power of 18 is going to go down here in the denominator. Let me rewrite this for my sake. This is going to be 2 raised to the power of 22 still divided by 2 raised to the power of 18. Divide by subtracting the exponents. You have 2 raised to the power of 6. Excuse me. The power of 4. 2 raised to the power of 4. Sorry about that. This can be written out, but later in this question, you're actually going to want this as base 2 because this 4 is going to become important. But for now, I'm going to write it out as 2 raised to the power of 4, which equals 16. Because this is the number of banks that you're going to have 
for this total memory. This is your answer. 16 banks for this total memory. Now, part five asks for how many address bits are needed for all memory. If you remember part three, this is literally just the same question, but instead of caring about this digit or product, we're caring about this one. So it's the same process. Let's just go ahead and go through it. I'm going to rewrite 4m as 2 raised to the power of 2, and m is k times k, which is 2 raised to the power of 10 times 2 raised to the power of 10, which equals 2 raised to the power of 22. Now, this question is not asking for the number of addresses. It is asking for the number of address bits necessary to represent all of those addresses. The address bits, when written in base 2, is represented by the exponent. So our answer is nothing more than 22. So 22 address bits. Okay, so part six is where it gets a little bit difficult, but it's not actually difficult if you know how to do it. The way my professor explained this concept to me, assuming she actually did explain it, I'm not terribly sure, was not helpful to me at least. So I ended up resorting to every resource I could find through a web search, um, whether you're talking about Chag, Slater, uh, Tutorials Point, uh, Stack Overflow. I eventually found this one obscure website that explained it to me conceptually and I was able to logically infer a very difficult way of doing it, which is written out right here. Logically, this makes sense, and it will work. It got me the right answer, but good lord, it took a long time, and I hated it. The correct way is to just recognize that this hexadecimal address is an address to f begin with. And the question is asking for the bank identified in binary. The correct next step is to take this hexadecimal number address and convert it to binary. Now, the way that I convert hexadecimal to binary is I write out all of the bits of a binary number necessary to sum up to 16 because hexadecimal is base 16, which is going to be the first four bits, which I've rewritten as 8, 4, 2, and 1 so that I can do this quickly. So to arrive at a sum of 3, you need 2 and one. You can think of that as, I will need this, therefore it's true. I do not need this, therefore it's false. True and false are represented by zeros and ones. So I'm going to write this as zero, zero, one, one. That is the binary representation of three. To get a sum of C, which is the same thing as C equals 12, you're going to get eight plus four equals 12. So that's one, one, zero, zero. To get a sum of 2, all you need is 2. So it's 0, 0, 1, 0. To get a sum of 5, you're going to want the 4 and the 1. So that's 0, 1, 0, 1. T to get a sum of D, which is the same thing as 13 when you're talking about hexadecimal, or decimal rather, excuse me, you're going to want 8 plus 4 again plus the 1. So that's 1, 1, 0, 1. To get a sum of 1, all you need is the 1. 0, 0, 0, 1 is pretty straightforward. Now, because of part 5, we know that there is a total number of address bits of 22. There are 22 total address bits to represent every memory address in the whole memory, which means we actually only need 22 of these numbers. If you haven't counted or done the math, there's actually 24 here. We can truncate it. We don't need these last two. The numbers that are important, that are significant, are these right here. 
those 22 bits. Now, because of what we found in part four, where we were determining how many banks this total memory required, which is 16, earlier I said that you're going to care about that 16 written as base two. Because just like we figure out how many address bits from question five there are, which is 22, this part of the question tells us how many address bits are required to determine which bank our address is located in. So scroll back down to the part that we're doing. We know from part four that we need four address bits. And it's going to be either the first four or the last four. The way we tell is in the question it says we're using high order interleaving. If it were low order interleaving, we'd care about that. Because it's high order interleaving, we care about this. So high order, at the very beginning of the number, low order at the very end of the number, the very tail of the number. So the answer is just given by this part of the entire memory address. One, 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 one. Once you realize how to do part six the easy way, part seven is easy, even easier, because you already have the binary address, and you know that the only important components of this binary address are, what am I doing, are these 22 bits, and you know from part four, based on how many banks we have, that you only need four binary address bits to represent which bank you are. Now, because this is a low order interleaving, we're, we don't care about these four. What we care about are these four. So this is the answer. Zero, 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 one. These four address bits tell us which bank specifically our whole entire address is located in. It's located in this one.